Hello, welcome back. This is Calculus by Dr. Oz. Uh, today we're going to go over an exercise where we're going to find the sum of a convergent series. And in each case, we have a special uh, kind of series. The first one is a telescoping uh, series, and the second one uh, is sort of like a geometric series, but we are given, we're not given the n term of the geometric series, so we're going to first try to find the n term in part b, and then we're going to put it in the infinite series form, and, and we're going to apply the uh, formulas for finding the sum of geometric series. All right, let's get started. All right, um, let's start with uh, part A. Uh, part A uh, is a telescoping series, uh, as you see, um, because it's given as a fraction in the bottom, you have uh, the product of two terms. So uh, we're going to use the partial fraction to split this fraction into smaller fractions. So why don't we just uh, rewrite the n term and use the rules of partial fraction uh, to split this into uh, smaller fractions. And the smaller fractions are going to come with uh, the denominators uh, 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 3, because this is already in the factor form. right? I'm going to put a constant here, another constant here, and I'm going to put a plus sign. And my next task is to determine uh, a and b. So here is the common uh, denominator. Uh, um, so the common denominator is 2n plus 1, uh, 2n plus 3. So I have to multiply top and the bottom for the first fraction by 2n plus 3. And, uh, and for the second fraction, I have to multiply the top and the bottom by uh, 2n plus 1. So, uh, so the tops would be a 2n plus 3, b 2n plus 1. And since all of them are having the same uh, common denominator, so I don't, I don't need to rewrite uh, the denominators, okay? So um, there are different ways to handle uh, 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 finding a and b. Uh, one easy way is like, uh, you know, picking certain n values and, 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 and solving uh, uh, the equations for a and b. So one easy, one, one easy way to handle this is like picking n equals uh, negative three halves and maybe uh, negative one half, okay? Uh, so the first n is going to make this term disappear because inside the parentheses is going to be zero. That term is going to disappear, so only the b term is going to survive. So for negative three halves, so b uh, b times uh, so one equals uh, b times uh, negative three halves times two plus one, so negative three plus one. And this one uh, implies that minus two b equals one and b equals negative one half, okay? For the second one, uh, n equals negative one half is gonna make this b term disappear, but the other term is gonna survive. So one equals um, a times, when n equals negative one half, so it's negative one plus the b, so that's two. So two times a equals one, uh, and that implies a equals one half, okay? So uh, once we're done finding a and b, we're going to go back and, and plug those back in here. So a equals uh, one half, and b equals negative one half. Okay. Once we have a partial fraction, we can go to the second stage and write the partial sum uh, of the terms of uh, the telescoping series. So all I'm going to do here is to to write s sub capital N, which is the partial sum, uh, keeping uh, the first uh, capital N terms in the sum. So let's start from uh, N equals one. So this is one half uh, three minus one half five. Okay, this is uh, the very first term in the sum. Let's keep as many terms as we can. So the second one, one half over uh, five. This is, again, this is for n equals 1. Uh, this is n equals 2, so 1 half, 7, okay? And then maybe one, one more, uh, 1 half, uh, 7, 1 half, 9, plus, plus, dot, dot, dot. Let's write the n minus second term. 
Okay, so one half. Uh, so this is n equals three. I'm gonna write n minus second. So, so little n is gonna be n minus second. Uh, two n minus three. Two n minus three. I'll just write uh, like this. Plus one half two n minus one. So now I'm going to write down the n minus first term. So one half two n minus one two n plus one. And finally, finally, I, I'm running out of space here. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just going to write here like this. And the final term, I'm going to just write it here. How about that? Uh, one half, uh, two n minus one, one half, two n minus two. So this is the final term, okay? So n minus second, n minus first, and n term, okay? So let's see what kind of like cancellations we have, okay? Um, well, uh, this term is going to cancel the very next immediate term. They're, they have opposite signs. This term is going to cancel uh, this term. And most probably this term is going to cancel the one coming after. And this term is going to be canceled by the one coming after, coming before, I'm sorry. And this term, and there is a minus sign here, by the way. This term is going to cancel, there's a typo, just correct that, uh, is cancel this one. And this term is going to cancel this one. So as you see, all the inner terms uh, for this type of telescoping series are canceled. Only the outer terms are, survi are surviving here. So to sum up, so Sn, this whole sum, is equal to this term, which is 1 over 2 divided by 3, so 1 over 6, minus this term, right? I mean, plus minus that term, so 1 half, 1 plus 2. Okay. So this is the whole partial sum uh, for n equals capital N. There we go. I cleaned that up. So what we're going to do is to pass the limit for the partial sum. Okay. All right. So this is calc one, and we know that this term is gonna approach zero because the denominator is getting larger and larger, whereas the top is one half, which is fixed. So a fixed number divided by a huge number is gonna approach zero. So this limit value is gonna be one over six. So the limit of the partial sum is in fact, the value of the infinite series. So this one sixth is also the value of This. Okay, so n from 1 to infinity, 1 over 2n plus 1, 2n plus 3, which is the original sum. Okay, so here in this example, we use the, uh, we use the uh, property of the uh, infinite series by using the partial fraction. So, so we know that this infinite series is a telescoping uh, series. Uh, when you have telescoping series in a partial sum, so many terms are canceled, but we, you have to write this very carefully because this is not always the pattern that, you know, only outer terms uh, survive. I think I'm going to have another example uh, in another video that you will see that uh, there will be some more leftover terms after the cancellation. So, so don't take this granted that, you know, all inner terms are canceled and outer terms survive. Okay, so there could be like different cases. So you have to so, so like explicitly write the sum, at least maybe for the first three, four terms from the beginning, and then maybe uh, the three or four terms in the end of the sum, okay? All right, let's look at part B. In part B, uh, we're given the sum of numbers, but we're not given a infinite series form, so we have to sort of like construct that. Um, um, and, and here there's a hint. So you have, in fact, two fractions provided to us. 
So we can actually guess the end term by looking at those. So, so well, here 27 over 8 is 3 cubed over 2 cubed, okay? And 9 over 2 is 3 squared divided by 2 to the 0. All I'm doing is trying to find a pattern to retrieve uh, the general term an. So the question here is what is an for the infinite series so that this sum is written as maybe n starting from zero, right? So that this sum is going to be a0 plus a1, a2, a3, so and all the way to infinity, right? So I'm trying to say like this last term here is a3, a2, a1, and a0. So by looking at those, is there any way to have a pattern for an? Okay, so uh, from the third from the fourth term to the third, so as you see that the, the power of three went down by one. Okay, so this is by the way one, right? I'm sorry. And uh, from here to here, right, the power of two went down by two. Okay, so I'm guessing that the next term, so the six should be represented by two to the minus one, three to the one, because uh, again, for 3, the exponent is just going down 1 when you go to the left. And in the bottom, the exponent 2 going down by 2. So th this term also should be the one before, should be like 3 to the 0 and 2 to the negative 3. So let's check. Well, 3 to the 0 is 1, and 2 to the negative 3 is 1 over uh, 2 to the 3. So 2 to the 3 is um, uh, 8. So 1 over 1 over 8 is in fact 8. So that's the first step. And here, this is 3 divided by 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half. And if you flip the bottom over, so it's 3 times 2, that's 6. Okay. So I think I, I found a pattern uh, that this term here, um, this term here, here represents a0. Okay. And then this term represents a1. Okay a2, a3, a2, and a3. So in the next slide, I'm gonna list them down in a clean way, and we'll talk about how we can ground a n. So now I can construct a n as uh, three at the top, two at the bottom, and the powers should be like, uh, like here, for example, the exponent here is the same as n. So, so then it should be uh, three to the n. Right, for, for generic n. And the bottoms, when n equals 0, it's negative 3. When n equals 1, it's negative 1. So it should be 2n minus 3. Let's have a reality check. When n equals 0, uh, then the bottom, the power of the bottom is going to be three, 2 times uh, 0 minus 3, which is uh, negative 3. That's exactly what I have here. Okay. For n equals 1, for n equals 1, we're right here. So then here uh, the exponent would be 2 times 1 minus 3. That's negative 1. And on and on and on. So, so essentially this is the uh, n term of the infinite series so that I can write this sum as the infinite series starting from 0 going all the way to infinity. 3 to the n divided by 2 to the 2n minus 3. So in the next step, I'm going to try to put this infinite series in the geometric series form because I can do that. So uh, let's try to work on that one. All right, so, so my task is to put the series in the form of a times r to the n. Okay, so I will have, I, I will have to find a and r. So that requires uh, to simplify this expression here. So the top is 3 to the n. So now I've split the bottom. So you have 2n and uh, 3 uh, in the exponents. I'm going to write it as 2n times 2 negative 3. So I can do that by using algebra. right? 2 to negative 3 is 1 over 2 to the 3. And that, when you flip it over, this is equal to 8 times 3 to the n divided by 2 to the 2n. Okay, and I need the power n only, so I'm going to simplify the bottom. So 8 times 3 to the n 
divided by, this is 2 to the 2n, so it's 2 squared to the power of n. Again, another algebra property. So it's 4, 4 to the n. So in total, in total, this is equal to, let me just write to the left, in total, uh, it's equal to uh, 8 times 3 over 4 to the power of n. Okay, this, this step is important because you're using all algebra uh, skills. So make sure you have those skills, okay? So, so then a equals 8 and, and, and r equals uh, a equals 8 and r equals uh, 3 quarters. And I can go ahead and use the formula for uh, geometric series. So it's a over 1 minus uh, uh, 3 over 4. So that's 8 over uh, 1 fourth, and that's equal to 8 times 4, uh, 32. Okay, 32 uh, for the sum of uh, for the sum of uh, the numbers uh, for the sum of the numbers uh, following this pattern, and then this is an infinite series that takes you all the way to the sum 32. All right, I think that's the end of the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you in another video.